वेलकम टू सीएसआर नेट केमिस्ट्री फैक्ट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल सीएसआर नेट केमिस्ट्री फैक्ट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ स्टीरियोकेमिस्ट्री द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज प्रोकाइडल मॉलिक्यूल सेकंड टॉपिक इज द प्रोवर एंड प्रोवेस एंड द थर्ड टॉपिक इज रिफेस एंड सीफेस दिस टॉपिक्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू दिस टॉपिक यूज्ड टू कम इन सीएसआर नेट गेट आईआईटी जैम and many other university level competitive exams so guys please watch this video till the end to understand each and every logic what i am going to describe now so guys let us start so guys in the beginning we have to understand what is a prokaryotic molecule prokaryotic molecule is a acaryotic molecule which can be converted in a chiral molecule by a single step so therefore the prokaryotic molecule are those molecule which are one step behind than a chiral molecule you can see here this is a molecule of ethanol and here any of the hydrogen if i replace by the deuterium then this molecule will be a chiral molecule so this molecule is a chiral molecule so just one hydrogen was replaced by deuterium so therefore this molecule is known as a pro chiral molecule and here also you can see this is a keto and if you add ethyl magnesium bromide in this then we know this c2h5- can react with this keto and it will form a molecule which is chiral and the attack may possible from the different side also so the another enantiomer also we can get so therefore this molecule is a chiral molecule so therefore in a single state we can convert this keto in a chiral molecule and hence this is a example of a pro chiral molecule so now we will come for the pro s and pro r conformations so guys if you see the molecule of ethanol then these two hydrogens are not stoichiometrically equivalent to understand that we will label these two hydrogen suppose this hydrogen is h a and this hydrogen is h b now if we replace the h a by deuterium then we will get a enantiomer and this is the enantiomer so by replacing the h a we got this enantiomer and these enantiomers have r configuration and if we replace the hb by deuterium then we will get another enantiomer and this enantiomer has s configuration as the replacing of the hydrogen means ha giving the r configuration therefore this ha is the pro r and the hb is giving the s configuration so therefore hb is the pro s so this is pro r and this is pro s so for a carbon which is sp3 hybridized for this case we can understand this one but for a carbon which is sp2 hybridized for that we have to check the rephase and cephase so guys we will start now the discussion on rephase and cephase so guys for the rephase and cephase we have to do few steps the first step is we have to give the numbering according to the cip rule that means we have to give the priority order we know oxy 
oxygen has more priority than the carbon and hence this will have the priority number 1 and among these two group this carbon is attached with the carbon but this carbon is attached with 3 hydrogen therefore this group will have higher priority and this will get the priority number 2 and this will get the priority number 3 now after giving this numbering we have to see the rotation from 1 to 2 to 3 and in this case from 1 to 2 to 3 is the rotation is clockwise rotation and if it is a clockwise rotation then the front set attack will be the D phase attack and the back set attack will be the C phase attack. So guys this is a clockwise rotation therefore the front side attack will be the D phase attack and the back side attack will be the C phase attack. Okay. Now if you see this molecule these two are identical but both have different phases. You can see this is the 1, 2, 3. So therefore 1, 2, 2, 2, 3 is the anti-clockwise direction. So this is the anti-clockwise and therefore the front set attack is the C phase attack. So in this case the front set attack is the C phase attack and the back set attack is the Reface attack. So therefore, the front side of this molecule is exactly same with the back side of this molecule and vice versa. Now, we will treat this molecule with sodium borohydride. This is a hydride source, H minus source. Now, for the shake of simplicity, I am considering this H minus will attack from the front side. So, if it attack from the front side, then what will happen is that we will get this enantiomer CH2, CH3 and this side is CH3 and here this OH will go back side the plane and this hydrogen will come in the front side of the plane now we will keep the numbering this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4 so 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. So this is the rotation and this is the anti-clockwise rotation. But the lowest priority group is above the plane. So therefore it will be the opposite configuration. So anti-clockwise generally give the S configuration. But because the lowest priority group is above the plane. So therefore it will be a R configuration. So this will get the R configuration isomer. Okay. Now, if the sodium borohydride attack will happen in this case from the front side, so this H minus will attack from the front side, then what will happen? This will open up and we will get this enantiomer CH3 and this side is C2H5 and here as this one is attacking from the front side, so there it will come in the above bond and this OH will come in the below bond and now if you give the numbering then 1 2 3 and 4 so 1 2 2 2 3 it is a clockwise rotation but again this lowest priority group are in the above the plane so therefore the configuration will be the opposite so generally the clockwise rotation will give the R configuration but as the configuration will be the opposite so therefore it is the S configuration okay so this is the R isomer we will get here and S isomer we will get here. So therefore both phases will differentiate among the product. So guys therefore this re phase and C phase are very important. Now I am coming to a second example of this re phase and C phase. So guys when this compound is treated with the sodium borohydride, we can get these two product. One is endo product and one is exo product. Endo product will get very little only 15% and exo product will get 85% amount. We have to justify this fact. So if you see the carbonyl carbon, there are two phases are available. One is the upside phase and one is downside phase. Though, so the hydride ion coming from this NABH4 can attack from the upside of this carbonyl carbon or from the back side of this carbonyl carbon. So this upside phase is the re phase or C phase we have to determine. 
So we know this as the first priority and this will be the second priority and this will be the third priority. So therefore 1 to 2 to 3 so the rotation is clockwise rotation and hence the upside is the reface attack. So therefore this hydride can attack from the upside and that will be a reface attack which will give this end product. So this end product will be the reface attack. And if the hydride attack will be done from the below side then it will be a C phase attack. In that case we will get this exo isomer. So this is the C phase attack. So guys in this case the reface attack will be hindered because of the aesthetic reason. You can see this 2 methyl group is present to give the steady crowding in this position. So therefore the attack from the H- will not take place from the above side. It will take place from the below side in a major amount. So therefore we will get the exo product in the major amount. So guys hope you understand this logic and thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment and subscribe this channel and please share with your friends and don't forget to press the bell, bell icon for the further notification from this channel. Thank you so much.